everybody. Good morning, happy Palm Sunday. It's not working. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. You've been in Lent for weeks, trying to get better, all of us trying to be better people, better disciples, and today we begin Holy Week. This is Palm Sunday, a joyous day in Jerusalem so many years ago, and we look forward to the celebrations this week. So welcome. I'll tell you the... Uh, thank you with your blessing. Hold up your back. Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, we who follow Christ the King lives and reigns and Jesus coming into Jerusalem from Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem to Beth his disciples and said into the immediately on you'll find a colt tethered on which no one has ever passed. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the map has of it. So they went off, found the colt tethered at a gate, it on the street, and they untied it. To them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered, till Jesus had told them, and they permitted it. So they brought the colt to Jesus. Sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they'd cut from the field. Preceding him, as well as those following him, kept crying out, Hosanna! Comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of other David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. Let us proceed into church. Come over here with me. The King of Glory. We'll stand here. I'm going to stand with the cute girls. You can stand over here. Go to the back. Sing that! 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you all. We have reached Palm Sunday. It's been a journey through Lent, and now we begin our holiest of weeks. So I'm thrilled to see so many of you here, and let us pray today. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And let's take a quiet moment. It's a big day for us. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Today we have the long reading of the Passion. It takes 20 minutes maybe. Um, it's important we listen. If you're more comfortable listening seated, please feel free to be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not, Not during, during the festival, the festival for, for fear, fear that, that there may be a riot, riot among, among the, the people. people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She's done a good thing for me. 
The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She's anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you. One of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not high. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread and the blessing, said the blessing, and he gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I've been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. 
for they could not sleep, keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left his cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned them, questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garment and said, What further need have we had to witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're talking about. So he went out into another court. Then the cock crowed. The maid said to him and began again, the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. 
Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As, as soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned them. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so? The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him to release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and wearing a crown of thorns, placed it on his head, weaving a crown of thorns. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. They pressed, him, they pressed into service a passerby, Simon of Cyrenia, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, that is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them uh, to see which should each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, Come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, 
Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also some women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in the tomb that he had hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. In lieu of a sermon, We'll just have a quiet minute to appreciate how much our God loves us. We profess our faith together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, <coughs> died, and was buried. And to hell. The third day he rose again, according ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And life everlasting. Let us now bring our needs and the needs of the world and place them before our God with full confidence that he loves us and always listens to us. We pray for Pope Francis and all those entrusted by God with leadership roles within the church. May they Im imitate the self-emptying love of Jesus, we pray. 
We pray for those persecuted throughout the world for speaking the truth, that the Lord may come to their help, that they may persevere in being prophets for our time. We pray. For those who are preparing to become full members of the Catholic Church during the coming Easter Vigil, May the witness of our lives inspire them to give themselves entirely to Christ. We pray. We pray for those who feel forsaken by God, that he will renew their faith in him, and that we may never be blinded to their plight. We pray. For ourselves during this holy week, that as we walk with Jesus on the way of the cross, we may follow him ever more closely and appreciate his great love and sacrifice for us. We pray. We pray for all those in our Paris community who are ill, including Abelardo Parco. We remember those who have died in faith, including Rosa Marin Vassallo, Ethel Verna, and Rosemary Gaida. May they dwell in Christ's abundant love for eternity. We pray. For the intentions of this Mass is for us the people of the Paris, for the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Heavenly Father, grant us the grace to persevere in living the Christian life so that we may share in the resurrection and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our table, let us all join in singing, Behold the Cross.
my sisters and brothers, pray that our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though innocent Jesus suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now in the words Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to this supper.
let us join in our communion hymn. Shelter me, O God.
couple of quick announcements. Our Hispanic Coordinating Council are selling palm designs. Any support you give, they'll love it. The Chrism Mass is tomorrow, Monday, at the cathedral. And everyone can go, and the bishops, bunch of bishops, a whole bunch of priests, they'll all be there. And uh, it's quite solemn. Invite you to come, 7 o'clock at the cathedral. Seder Family Meal is this Wednesday, the 27th, at 6.30 in Grill Hall. And call the office if you want to come, just to let them know how many are coming. The Holy Week schedule, Holy Thursday, that's this coming Thursday, of course, 7 p.m. Good Friday, Stations of the Cross at noon, prayer service at 1, Spanish Live Stations at 3, Seven Last Words in Spanish at 4, Spanish Service at 5, and the Seven Last Words in English at 7 p.m. And the Easter Vigil it will be 8 p.m. That's Saturday this week. Next Sunday, of course, is Easter Sunday. There will be an Easter egg hunt after the 9 and 11 and 1 o'clock Masses. And kids of all ages are welcome to hunt for eggs. School fundraiser at the stand today. 25% um, off your serve purchase goes back to our school. There's a flyer in the bulletin for more information. It's really wonderful to see Palm Sunday resonating with so many people. This is probably the biggest crowded church I've seen in a while. And uh, I know you came to hear my sermon. I apologize for not giving you a sermon today. <laughs> but I think the passion was the sermon. And uh, I hope to see many of you next week. Easter Sunday, great celebration. I think I'm on the nine next week. So let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, each one of you, with the best Holy Week ever, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let's sing our song and go in peace. And, and our closing is Jesus, Remember Me.